everybody welcome to the Dahlia Society we are on to vlogmas day 20 here in Australia I have been a little bit behind I've got a couple to catch up on so I'm going to do a little bit of advent calendar opening just so I can keep up to date it's getting to that really busy time of year it's a bit frantic uh, I know there was a few things that I promised you I'm still going to do and that includes making the pavlova recipe because um, I know a lot of you are waiting on that one I was planning to take you guys to one of the heritage gardens that I have access to with the diggers club uh, but unfortunately I have to take mum into hospital for a procedure on Wednesday so that might have to wait till between the Christmas a new year period we'll see how we go for that but yeah things happen and things change plans yeah it starts getting very very busy uh, I'm trying to be organized I've got a fair bit of my shopping done I've been out and got a few bits and pieces for Christmas day I wanted to show you a few of my favorite things and things that I um, use as far as beauty things go a little bit of Christmas inspiration as well uh, as what I'm making um, so let's get on to the advent calendars first because I do have to catch up on a few of those so the Kylie and the machine uh, I have actually got I think three days to do to catch up on the last one now with the advent calendar I'm sure last time I showed you which was the Sunday episode we're up to day 17 so we've got 18, 19, and 20 to catch up on. So we're going to get them done. The 18 is this blow on here. Uh, I've been really enjoying using them in my things I've been making. It's just so nice to have a variety of tags. So it's been brilliant. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, that's really cute. And I have seen a couple of my friends in the UK vloggers um, show these. This one's proud as a punch. So that is very cute. Love that. And I'm wearing a pattern emporium dress called the Meet You There dress. This is a woven pattern um, because mainly they do have a lot of knit patterns. So it's really nice that they have a couple of woven ones as well. So love wearing this. I'll be wearing this out tonight. Um, Number 19, okay, we've got 19 there. Let's see if we can open this one up. Oh, this is so cute. This is really weird because this has sidekick and it looks exactly like my Burmese cat Charlie, so it's very fitting. And it, isn't it funny that a lot of the sewists have cats that like to join them when they're sewing. I know whenever I start um, cutting up fabric on that big table out there, I get all manner of um, at least one of our four cats come to join me. So it's uh, it's nice to have a bit of company, isn't it? When you're sewing uh, number 20, the top there, 20. Let me see. This is that feeling you get when you make something and it works out exactly as you imagine it. It's good. It says nailed it. So that is another great tag from the Kylie and Machine Advent Calendar. So I've been really enjoying these this year and I'll definitely be getting one for next year if they do decide to bring them out again. I think they've been really popular. The chocolate calendar, I have been resisting temptation. I bet you didn't think that I could, but I have been following along with the days. So day 20 we're up to. Day 20. Oh, it's so hard to see. Day 20 is at the top. Okay. We've got a mango and vanilla. Pureed mango ganache with hints of fresh vanilla bean. <gasps> okay. That is going to be delectable with my morning coffee. And I did say I was going to take you guys into the Cocoa Black um, Cafe. But unfortunately, when we got there on uh, Wednesday last week, their upstairs section was locked off and they said they don't really use it other than weekends which is really disappointing because uh, at the front of the cafe they had a lot of tables and chairs and they were really full up um, so it kind of prevented anyone going in and looking at their beautiful tea rooms upstairs so that was a real shame so yeah that was a real disappointment so we decided to go to our favorite cafe which is Brunetti's instead so we sat on showing you guys Coco Blacks but if I ever go past there again and it's open I promise I'll be taking you in there I had a lovely email from Homemade at Arrow Mountain Buttons. Now I have purchased 
from Aramatin before. They're really lovely little handmade buttons and they do have an Etsy store online here in Australia. They can be ordered from anywhere around the world and I think it's just beautiful, something lovely about having a handcrafted button. So Homemade actually said, reached out and said to me, would you like to pick out some buttons? And I said, yes, I would. I love her buttons. So I can totally vouch them because I've, yeah, I've used them before in the past. And I've got some beautiful little wooden cat ones of hers as well. Um, that I'll be definitely using. But she has let me pick out some um, marbled buttons and I've picked out this gorgeous, um, they're like iridescent. I'm going to get them out and show you because I just think um, they're really unique. Um, so I'll link her store below if any of you would like to go and have a look at what she's got there to offer. And yeah, her buttons are really, really pretty. Uh, all different sizes. You can get wooden ones as well. Um, but I just think the colour in that is really pretty. And I'll pick up a lot of different colors when I'm sewing and then I've got some marbled black ones because they're really handy to have for things like uh, coat making as well I just think these are lovely buttons too so yeah definitely head on over to Arrow Mountain Buttons if you're wanting something a bit more unique she has got uh, her side over on Instagram and on Facebook as well so Arrow Mountain Buttons are definitely worth having a look at but I just thought that was a really nice um, generous thing for her to do so thank you to Homemade for all those beautiful buttons What's on the sewing table at the moment? Well, I have been very busy. You might see in the background that I've actually completed my Christmas day dress. Yeah. It's a real relief moment when you know you can get that done because I know I set a really big challenge um, for myself, a very ambitious list of Christmas and New Year dresses that I wanted to make. And I would have I've probably got about half of them done and I, I knew that I'd be struggling to get them all done, but I'm very happy to say that I've got the Christmas Day one done and it's really lovely. So the pictures for that will be coming up very shortly. I'm going to show you on Christmas Day, have a vlog out for you guys to see me uh, dressed up in that. I've made a couple of Pattern Emporium dresses because I found that I wanted to be wearing some really comfortable uh, knit dresses first thing in the morning when you're busy and it's warm. And I'm also in the process of making the Ava dress. You may remember the Ava dress was one I had on my list. I'll show you the line drawings from Pattern Scout. A really lovely long line, very simple straight dress, but I wanted to make it in this beautiful fabric from Cloth Edit, this linen and silk, very picturesque gorgeous fabric but I really want to make sure I get the fit right before I go ahead and chop into that. I'm going to make a, a midi length version of that same dress in this gorgeous linen rayon blend. Now in uh, Spotlight this was on special I think it was down to $12 a metre and I decided to go for a good basic black because I think a basic black dress is just so handy to have in the wardrobe and I don't have a lot of plain black or dark coloured dresses but I really think it looks lovely with a pair of tan sandals for summer so I'm going to make the uh, midi length in the Ava for that first get the fit right and then go on to maybe making that gorgeous fabric maybe for New Year's Eve um, don't have anything planned for New Year's Eve but it's always just nice to make something for yourself to feel a bit more special in so the weather looks really good. The forecast for Christmas is looking gorgeous. I think this whole week we've got mid 20s to high 20s. Um, but at the moment, the weather is very blustery out there. You can see there's a, a lot of wind. So I decided to film inside because it can affect the, the microphone picking up uh, when I talk if it's a bit too windy. So yeah, I'll be ready to cut that pattern out today and start on that. Um, now, what have I got to show you? There's a few things I wanted to show you um, things that I am liking using at the moment and maybe some couple of Christmas ideas, things that I love to purchase every Christmas. I know I promised you guys a favorite things episode. And these are just a couple of things that I am loving at the moment. First of all, you'll notice that I'm a really big candle fanatic. I love candles. I've got my dusk one over here, which is this cute little wombat. And that is a peanut butter cookie one. It's just beautiful. Um, so I'm a big fan of dusk candles. And I also love purchasing on uh, a site called Wickedy Whack. Um, they do have these in TK Maxx as well. Um, this, the Wickedy Whack brand is Australian owned business. Now I purchased that one in, in TK Maxx. They do have them there as well as an online store. So I know TK Maxx don't have an online store here in Australia. So their online store, they do have some beautiful candles. And I can really vouch to say that the um, quality and the smell of these is absolutely magnificent. So that is one of my favorite candle brands. Now, a favorite uh, drink of mine for Christmas Day is a drink called Frasita. Now, this is actually a Chilean strawberry sparkling wine drink, and it's traditional uh, 
it's from what I've heard in Chile. Um, but I have been purchasing this every Christmas, probably for the last 10 years or so now. And it's a really sweet, decadent, um, strawberry sparkling drink. And it's very, very festive looking. Um, but that is sold in most um, bottle shops here in Australia. I think I got that from BWS. I know Dan Murphy's have it as well. It's a really favorite festive drink of mine uh, if you like a sweet sparkling wine it's just really nice because it's that bright rich red color and yet it's made from fresh strawberries um, but yeah it's just something that I sort of buy every Christmas and it's a bit special so yeah it's one thing I like to have on the table a couple of bottles of Frasita. I also found in Woolworths these lemon myrtle meringues. Now, lemon myrtle is a very um, distinct Australian flavor, and they've incorporated it into some little mini pavlovas. So I'm really excited to try those with some raspberries on top. I don't know if they'll be as good as my homemade pavlova, but I'm planning on making uh, a pavlova in a wreath style and putting... Um, the berries on top just to make it very Christmassy. Another tradition here, of course, I'm definitely thinking about making for, maybe for Boxing Day because we're having family over for pizzas and Boxing Day celebrations, uh, is a chocolate ripple cake. Anyone here in Australia would know that chocolate ripple cake is very festive and very easy to make and it just is something yummy to have uh, in your refrigerator ready to pull out on a, a special occasion. And it's just uh, basically chocolate biscuits, chocolate cookies um, with cream and you make kind of a ring shape and you can decorate it with whipped cream and with either peppermint crisp or berries as well. So I'll be definitely making one of those. Here in Australia, my favorite website for looking up a good recipe is taste.com. There's also a magazine that comes out every month, I think, and this is the Christmassy version they've got. Have a look at that amazing looking trifle on the front. I have uh, been looking through this magazine with my, uh, my husband yesterday and just saying how amazing the food looks in this. So um, yeah, just it's just giving me a lot of inspiration. I am having a Hello Fresh delivery come for with the Christmas um, dinner basics in it, but I'll also be making um, be doing a smoked turkey. My husband will be doing that on the, on the smoker, as well as that we'll be doing a ham and maybe some uh, prawn cocktails for lunch. We do a seafood cocktail and salad type of thing for lunch. So uh, my main meal for Christmas will be the dinner. It gives you a lot of great ideas, but we'll also be doing a uh, Secret Santa Kris Kringle type event. We do that every um, Christmas dinner before we sit down and eat. And it's a really hilarious thing. We have like a $50 budget and everyone gets allocated uh, from a website. I think it was a secret Santa website. And you just yeah, you get your, cert your certain person emailed to you and you can go out and purchase something that you think they'll love. And it's just really nice and personal because you end up finding that this, um, you'll get a gift that you never expected to receive. But it's just nice to think that someone's put the thought into thinking about what you might like to receive for Christmas. So that is definitely something we would love to eat for Christmas lunch, being the prawns and the salad. If it's going to be a warm day, um, we tend to try and have more of that kind of um, seasonal produce, salads and beautiful stone fruits and berries and maybe something a bit more luxurious for dinner as far as having the roasted meat and veggies as well. Dessert, we usually will be having either a trifle or a pavlova. Sometimes we do a plum pudding, but if it's too hot, it's usually not something I feel like eating. Um, yeah, but it's just a traditional thing. I think we all enjoy sitting around the table and having um, the hats on and enjoying a Christmas meal together. Other things I'm liking at the moment being uh, for summer here in Australia, this I'm really enjoying using at the moment. It's La Roche-Posay Sunscreen 50 Plus. And it's fantastic because it dries matte on the skin. So you can put it underneath your foundation and it won't get that greasy kind of look uh, to your skin. So that I can really vouch for that and say it's fantastic in that broad spectrum. And also uh, if you're into a fake tan, there's a mist called a Saint-Tropez 
face mist and it gives you a gradual build up of a fake tan and you can see I'm very pale generally so anything too tan I can look a bit on the orange side so I think this is a really nice natural looking uh, face tanner so I uh, really enjoy using that at the moment. A couple more of my favorite things on the beauty end. Uh, this is a favorite uh, eyeliner of mine. It's Castilla and it's actually a um, eyeliner, like a texture you would say. It stays on really nicely. It doesn't smudge and I use that on my top lid. And I know they do have a variety of colors. I actually purchased this from Mecca online, um, but that brand I can highly, highly recommend the Stiller and the brown one is really nice as well, but that will just dry and stay on all day. And if you uh, have sensitive eyes or you know teary eyes, that is great because it won't budge. So that I'm really enjoying using that at the moment. Uh, on the more budget friendly um, chemist brand or drugstore brand, whatever you uh, prefer to call it, the Flower Beauty, um, lipsticks i'm really enjoying using them as well and they're really really cheap i think they're under like i think they're like six or seven dollars per lipstick and this is um a drew barrymore range so i know she actually came out with this cosmetic range to be more on the affordable um side of things which is great because sometimes makeup can be way overpriced and expensive so i must say i'm really enjoying using these lipsticks i know these were from yeah chemist warehouse i purchased them and she has a whole range of uh, the flower beauty makeup but one of my favorite ones is called dahlia desire <laughs> speaking of which first dahlia is out so yeah it's really exciting when you see the first one erupting and it's exactly this color actually which is the dahlia desire so yeah i can highly recommend these lippies as well if you like something a bit creamy and not too dry the flower beauty uh, i think these are the cream variety you can get matte or cream so very happy with those as well. Now, favorite author. Uh, I haven't done a lot of reading lately. Of course, I've been really um, consumed by the sewing, the editing and blogging at the moment. But if I get a spare moment and this is my favorite author, she releases a new book. I'm just onto it straight away. I don't even read reviews or anything. I just go ahead and purchase. Um, so Belinda Alexandra is my favorite author and she happens to be an Aussie author as well. She writes about historical uh, but in fiction. So she'll write accurately in the historical sense but the characters are all fictional. Um, so she has very strong female characters um, that are just very easy to read and I find it really interesting how she incorporates a certain time in history into this character's life. Um, this one, of course, was from the Spanish Civil War, the Golden Earring. Uh, but there is one called uh, Tuscan Rose that was set around the 40s during wartime. I love that book. There are so many great books uh, that I can highly recommend, all of, all of them. They're all fantastic. So, uh, yeah, I just love um, – there's one called Wild Lavender, which was set around the 40s in, uh, in France. Uh, yeah, so I would say my favorite will probably be Tuscan Rose. That one was set in, in the 40s in Italy. And yeah, I just love the way she writes about her strong female characters. They're a really good read. And I've got, as I said, I've got all of her novels. And uh, it's one author that I know I can trust and love the way she, the way she writes. I just find I get all consumed within the first chapter. Um, yeah, it's just really nice, uh, nicely done. And she really researches the era that she sets the character in very well. There's so much thought put into these books and so much research. So highly recommend Belinda Alexandra book. If you are getting any time to do some reading over the holidays, that is a brilliant author to choose. So I'm off to do a bit more preparation for some sewing and a bit more organizing things for Christmas day. And I will be back hopefully tomorrow with day 21 to show you my latest vlog. So we'll see you soon. Take care, happy sewing and bye for now.